welcome back to my channel. My name is Megan and today's video is all about transitioning out of the snoo. If you are here, you are probably curious about how it is going to be to transition your baby out of the snoo and into the crib when it's that time. I made a video at the two month mark um, of having the snoo, all about the snoo, how I felt about it, how things were going with the snoo. You can check out that video. I'm gonna have a link below in the description box. If you have any questions about how the snoo works, how it is to bring a newborn home to the snoo, just really anything about the snoo. If you're questioning it, watch that video because I'm, I have nothing but great things to say about the snoo. It's worked out really, really incredibly for me. And there's also some really great tips in that video. Um, if you're having trouble with the snoo or if you're, if you're concerned about how the snoo is gonna work for you, I think will really help you out. So I have had my son in the crib for about a week now. I wanted to make this video like day two of having him in the crib, but I knew that that was not wise because not everything works the first couple days and sometimes you have regressions with things. So I waited a solid week. We are definitely in the crib. Everything is going very, very smoothly. I cannot believe it. And we're not at the six month mark. I thought for sure we were going to be so attached to the snoo that we were gonna be in it for six months. But we are at the five month mark and I have transitioned him out and it has gone so smoothly, I'm amazed. When things started working really well with the snoo and I became so attached to it, I was worried about not using it anymore. How was it gonna be when we needed to put him in the crib? How would he react? How would I feel having him out of the room? Would there be sleepless nights at that point after having you know six months or however long of, of really great sleep? <laughs> Was I going to hit this point where we were gonna start losing sleep and we've not had an issue with that at all since we brought him home Very very few nights have we had any issues. So I want to tell you guys how This whole thing went transitioning weaning there is a weaning setting on the snoo from your app You can go ahead and just swipe it to weaning snoo actually alerts you um, I think it was at like four and a half months. It alerted me that we needed to start thinking about weaning him I went ahead a couple days later after thinking about it, I was like, you know what, it's, it's probably time. He was starting to kind of like show signs of rolling, but I started, you know, just thinking about it. I went ahead and I turned the weaning setting on. And basically what the snoo does when you turn that setting on is it still functions just like it always did, except for it doesn't have the swaying motion going constantly. It doesn't turn on with the swaying motion and it doesn't sway all throughout the night while your baby sleeps. If your baby cries, it does go ahead and turn on it starts swaying and it goes all the way up to level four like it normally does. And it always has the white noise on. So even though it's not moving, it always has the white noise on. So your baby, when you have the weaning setting on, is still swaddled and it still has white noise, which I think is perfect because that's how we transitioned into the crib. We had him swaddled and we had the white noise. So basically after a few weeks of having the snoo on the weaning setting, we went ahead and just kept him in a snoo sack and we put him in the crib with the white noise. So it was essentially the same environment as the snoo with the weaning setting on except for he was in his crib and i started doing just naps i did that for a few days and that was working out really well and then at night i would have him in the snoo with the weaning setting on and then after that was working out i went ahead and i started using the snoo with it completely off and i have a white noise machine so that way if he cried the snoo wouldn't cut on it wouldn't turn on i would have to go in and put his pacifier back in or we would have to deal with it and it has gone very smoothly. I went ahead and I got a new sack for him because the snoo sack has his arms down swaddled. I wanted to start transitioning him to having his arms up, but still not being able to um, move freely because he still has a little bit of that reflex that wakes him up at night. So I got him this sack on Amazon. I will also link that below. I know that snoo does make sleep sacks. I went ahead and I bought this because it was prime, it could be here in two days. I live in Virginia, Snoo delivers it from California. I didn't wanna wait uh, for the delivery, so, but it has worked out perfectly. It has these little um, places for his arms to go, so his arms are up while he's sleeping at night, and I can unzip each one. So once he starts rolling, I'll unzip one arm, and then you can unzip the other arm, and both arms are out, and he can slowly kind of learn how to sleep with his arms out. So I did just naps, in the the crib for a little while with him in the snoo off for a little while and then about a week ago i went ahead and i did a full night in the crib which was so hard i told my husband when we were going to sleep i was just having so much anxiety i was worried that he would wake up and i wouldn't hear him i was worried that i, 
I don't even know. I, I mean, all of the worst, darkest <laughs> thoughts crept into my mind that night before I fell asleep. But we have a really good monitor. I really like it. It is the Infant Optics DXR8, and I will go ahead and link that below as well because I've been so impressed with it. Um, somebody is squealing in the background. The image on it is so clear. I wanted something that wasn't Wi-Fi capable or Wi-Fi based, and this is just absolutely perfect. The reviews are amazing. Um, so I'll, I'll link that below as well, and you can check that out if you need a monitor. We didn't have a monitor with this new. I know some people do, but we had an old school um, audio only monitor. So I guess we did have a monitor, just wasn't a video monitor. Um, so now we have the video monitor, and we can retire the audio monitor. Although that thing reached so far, like, I'm not kidding. I went to a neighbor's house one night and had the monitor with me and I could hear him in his bedroom. So anyway, what I will tell you is that we have had great luck with transitioning out of the SNU. I hope that if you have the SNU or thinking about re or thinking about purchasing it, that you have as much luck as we did. I pers I'm saying luck right now, but I personally don't think it's luck. I think the SNU is a good device. I think it teaches babies to adapt to the real world. During the fourth trimester, when your baby is used to being in your womb, your baby is used to movement, your baby is used to the white noise, um, the SNU is the perfect thing for that. It, it really mimics the womb and mimics all of those comforts that the baby has in the womb. Womb. And when it's time for them to start transitioning into the crib, I think that they're naturally already ready. I don't think that it takes a lot of work. I kind of let my son lead the way. I noticed that when the weaning setting was on and he would start to cry after it hadn't been moving, it would start to move and he would cry worse. I mean, it would just kind of escalate from there. So that's when I knew I needed to start just turning the snoo off and still keeping him swaddled and still keeping him in the snoo, but we just had it off. Because I think at some point he just doesn't need the movement. He, he didn't need it anymore. It wasn't working for him. And I just let him make that decision and it worked out for us. And my other tip is that if you can, Try to have your baby nap in the snoo. I know that not everybody is a stay-at-home mom like I am, and even that was hard. Like, you know, I'm running errands and going to the grocery store and I'm doing things, and it was an effort to make sure that I was home for his naps. When I started to see him yawn or started to rub his face, I'm like, oh, we gotta go. We gotta get home, we gotta get him in the snoo. And I really think that paid off for me. I know that, not, like I said, not everybody's able to do that, but you can always pack your snoo sack with you. If you're going somewhere, put them in the snoo sack, bring a white noise machine. You can mimic that snoo as much as possible because really what you're doing is you're mimicking the womb. It's just comforts, it's it's things that um, that you can do to, to really create an ideal nap environment outside of the snoo. So that is my, my advice on that. I, I wish you all luck. I'm really excited for my friend, uh, Brittany, who's getting ready to have her second child. She did not have a snoo for her first, and I cannot wait to see how she likes um, her snoo when she gets it. She's uh, she's actually gonna have ours. So I'm excited to pass it on to somebody. I've just been so happy with it. I cannot imagine how much sleep I would have lost without it. I just, I can't. Anyway, thank you for watching. I do DIY, home, mom, all kinds of videos. If you like what I'm here doing, I think you should stick around, make sure you subscribe, make sure that you're on for notifications so that each time I upload a video, you are notified. And I will see you guys next time, bye.